it turns out that in the midst of hearing that a couple of major companies, including you know little guys like Pfizer and Moderna, uh, were working on vaccines, it became clear that they were probably going to get there. Again, it's a testament to how fantastic science has become. But once they got there, it was pretty well known that, holy mackerel, we're going to need just for Americans alone three or four hundred million doses, for the world eight billion doses, and the manufacturing capability, even for those big guys, isn't going to be there. Not only is that a problem, but you need eight billion syringes. They'll be filling the ocean, polypropylene. You need eight billion little 24, 25, 26 gauge hypodermic needles, hard to make hard, and hard to get rid of, and they use from the various Purposes, glass vials full of this stuff. And by the way, you then need trained clinicians to deliver this stuff. And even in this country, we were being choked. What are you going to do around the rest of the, the world, particularly the developing world? But we were told, and it turned out that if you do a little research, it's true, that it's been known for more than 50 years. That's why I said incrementalism doesn't work. It's been known for more than 50 years that vaccines in particular are way more effective if they're delivered intradermally, into your skin, not through your skin. And to this day, the only legal way to read the label copy, the only way to give a vaccine, like most other things, is either intramuscular, deep into your muscle, intravenous, or subcutaneous. You poke through your skin and it goes into the interstitial space and gets absorbed. Why? Because your skin's so damn thin, mm. not even the best surgeon in the world is going to be able to take the, a needle, push it in, but not through your skin, and then deliver the dose. It would be like telling all of you, I have my liver and my kidney, my lung and my pancreas, they're all in a pouch, my perineal, and I put it all in a balloon and put some fluid around it so that they're going to float around in the balloon. Then you go to somebody and say, take this needle, push it into the wall of the balloon, <laughs> but don't pop the balloon and then deliver into the balloon a little what the medical people call a little bleb. <laughs> well, it turns out, and it's the mechanism of action is apparently well understood by people in the clinical space, that the reason you'd love to deliver a vaccine into the skin and not through the skin is because nature's pretty clever. And your body has cells whose sole function is to warn your body, make antibodies, there's something bad that's gotten into you. Well, if you put the cells that are going to tell your body to start making antibodies in your liver or kidney or heart or lung, it's a little late. It would be like having a parachute that automatically opens on impact. <laughs> so, so, so what nature did is it said your skin, your skin, which is the largest organ in your body by weight other than bone, your skin has 100,000 times higher density of these dendritic cells than any other organ in your body. So we said, why don't we just come up with a simple way to put the vaccine directly into, not through your skin. Turns out you'll need less than one-tenth the dose. So if Pfizer could make 100 million doses and you need one cc, well, now that'll be a billion doses because you need a tenth as much. There's no pain. There's no side effects. You wouldn't need a professional to... to make the delivery. It has all sorts of advantages. You can ship it around easily. You don't have waste like syringes and needles. So we set out to do that. And it turned out we, there was a company, an Israeli company, that had pointed the right way. They were using semiconductor technology to make the world's... You, I have the best machine shop in the world and the best plastic molders. We couldn't possibly make needles 500 millionths of an inch long, so sharp that they, you put them on your skin and you can't even really feel it penetrating the stratum corneum. But semiconductor technology can do it. Put up a picture here and I'll show you a wafer, which is a semiconductor wafer that has these micro needles on it. And on this single wafer, there's 75,000 of them. That wafer there is the same, comes off the same machine that makes your processes, your memory. There's a blow up diagrammatically next to it. The hole in that thing is 100 millionths of an inch in diameter. The length of it, it is so sharp, it'll easily pierce your skin. So we, we developed this, but we said, and I'm sure you all remember Pavoy's equation that says that the flow through a cylindrical cross section varies as the inverse fourth power. Of the. Well, it turns out that to push any fluid through this thing is going to 
take a lot of time and nobody's gonna stand there and do it. Also, a baby's nice soft skin or a young woman's nice soft fleshy skin and my old crudgy leathery skin are so different. How are you gonna do it? You need to eliminate technique. So we made a thing called daisy. We made a thing that looks like a, a, the petals of a daisy. It's got a, a Band-Aid piece on the bottom of it. If you push it down on your skin, the first thing that happens is the daisy petals stretch. They go flat, like take an orange peel. Well, as they go flat, they become like a drum head for the skin underneath, which, which makes, by the time you push hard enough, you, you're directly against the skin with these sharp needles. Then there's a tiny little bleb. There's, there's a basically about the size of a baby aspirin volume of space on the top side. And when you push hard enough, essentially to trigger this thing, a little spring in there will put about two pounds of pressure on it. So even though it takes two minutes to deliver this tiny, tiny amount of drug, nobody has to stand there for two minutes with a needle and a syringe poke in your arm. So, you know, it was simple. It only had about 20 parts. We had to design, develop, manufacture, do the injection molding, the tooling. Anyway, there's a video of this. Uh, we did our own in-house, this one we don't have to tell the FDA about. We did our own little in-house study. All we delivered was one-tenth of a cc of saline to see that we get a nice bleb. And I did a cross-section. I'm fortunate at Tech. I have some of my employees are young. Right out of school, some are geezers like me. Some are men, some are women, some are Asian, some are African. Let's play this video. So we, we made some of these things. We did all the tooling. <clears throat> And we call it Daisy for the obvious reason. Now we did this little hokey thing because I figured I better take this thing to the FDA and tell them what's coming. Um, these are people inside my company. Uh, he's one of my engineers, that's his actual child. Uh, we didn't get a release from his child, but uh, um, <laughs> uh, uh, he's now only using the alcohol because we wanted to show, you know, makes the Band-Aid stick. You really can't feel those needles. It feels like you just pressed a piece of sandpaper on your skin. Now, yes, it worked on that little girl, and these are all a bunch of different uh, uh, people inside uh, DECA. Now, we're gonna do a, a time release there. We're gonna wait two minutes, and each of these people pulls it off to demonstrate that that device, during that two minutes, delivered a tenth of a cc. There's the bleb, there's the bleb, there's the bleb. There's a bleb everywhere. So we took this to a couple of big drug companies. Unfortunately, we'll probably do all the clinicals outside the U.S. We've been that was your the alternate name for the device, the bleb, right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, we are now at a point where we have three or four major credible pharma companies that realize this could be used for dengue fever and lots of other things in the developing world. We are in the process of organizing a, mm. a, a, a various set of uh, clinical trials for that, but I'm hoping by the next time a pandemic hits this country, you won't have to see syringes and needles and large volumes and get fevers and muscle, all the side effects go away and we'll have a, we were told by the way, by the clinicians, many of them who graduated medical school probably long before you said, mm. we haven't seen a new method of delivering a drug into a person since they developed the needle, which was essentially during the Civil War. Anyway, we're very proud of that thing and we'll see how it goes.